Hello everyone and welcome to the week 15 edition of Instant Replay where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. Filling in for the incomparable Simon Borg, I'm Andrew Wiebe. We start in the Big Apple where New York City FC put together the first ever winning streak in club history in what was a clean game for referee Jair Marufo. Same goes for a PK no call in the 79th minute when David Villa goes down under a Nigel Rio Coker tackle. Live, it looks like a penalty as Villa crumples under the challenge, but slow motion confirms Marufo's decision to wave it off. It's a risky tackle to be sure, but Rio Coker gets the ball cleanly and you can see Villa's fall is actually caused by an awkward step of his own doing, rather than contact from the Englishman. That wasn't the case at Gillette Stadium, however, as the Revs were deprived of a clear spot kick a few minutes after halftime. First, marvel at the ball from Lee Wynn, then watches the fires of Lavelle Palmer runs Teal Bunbury over from behind with no thought to the ball. Silvio Petrescu doesn't blow his whistle, but I think he should have. That's a penalty in my opinion. Fortunately for New England, they scored just seconds later en route to a 2-0 victory. I also think Petrescu should have gone to his pocket in the 79th minute when Chicago's Jason Johnson connects with Andy Dorman's thigh on a reckless attempted shot in the box. For me, that's a yellow card, and the young forward is lucky to get a reprieve. The Galaxy and Crew SC will both consider themselves a bit unlucky not to have won after a rain-delayed game that saw referee Robert Sibiga forced into a few potentially game-changing decisions. First, the 19th-minute goal Stefan Ishizaki thought should have stood watches the LA midfielder initiates contact from behind on a recovering Emmanuel Pogatetz to draw the whistle. Should Pogatetz be stronger? Probably, but for me the angle of the challenge means this isn't shoulder to shoulder and a foul is the correct call. It's a little less clear seven minutes later when Omar Gonzalez throws himself into Kai Kamara as MLS's leading scorer attempts to tee up a shot. It's a bang bang play that doesn't see a whistle, but Crew SC fans certainly thought Sibiga should have pointed to the spot. I see their point, but agree with the no call in this case. I can't pass judgment on this offside call against Justin Miram in the 67th minute though. Without a wide angle shot that shows Miram's position in relation to the LA back line when Pipe Aguin makes the pass, it'd just be guesswork. But there's no guesswork on this Brad Evans yellow card in the 50th minute of a comprehensive Sounders win versus FC Dallas. He may win the ball, but he does so with an extended leg and studs showing. Evans doesn't like it, but both he and Walker Zimmerman are fortunate there isn't more contact and a possible red card here. I'm not so sure Kelly got it right in the 85th minute though when he showed Blas Perez a yellow for what appeared to be a clean tackle from the Panamanian. Is there contact? Sure, but I think a caution is overkill, especially since Perez won the ball and it's actually Dempsey whose follow through initiates the contact. We ended the Citrus Bowl where DC United felt hard done by, Orlando were lucky not to give up a PK of their own, and Davey Arno flirted with a red card that never came. We start in the 28th minute when referee Jose Carlos Rivero points to the spot after DC defender Taylor Kemp bowls over Pedro Ribeiro at the edge of the area, a foul Ben Olsen deems soft after the match. I'm with Benny, this is soft but that doesn't mean it's not a foul. That there's contact isn't debatable, and Kemp only has himself to blame for leaving his feet. And while I'm with Rivero on that call, I thought he missed a legitimate DC PK shout just before halftime. That is, until I took a closer look. Perry Kitchen doesn't protest too much when Sean St. Ledger hauls him down on a corner kick, but check out the fistful of jersey the Irishman uses to bring his mark to the ground. On first glance, that seems to be a clear penalty kick, right? but wind it back and watch when the contact happens and when the ball is actually put in play. Since the tug comes before the ball is live, it can't be a penalty kick. Good call from Rivero, though I think he should have ordered the kick retaken. We finish things off by taking a closer look at DC midfielder Davey Arnault, who unsuccessfully flirted with the red card all night long. The veteran got things started by drawing a yellow card after 23 minutes, one Arnaud wasn't happy about but I think was deserved. The tackle's reckless and nowhere near the ball. Plus, watch how Arnaud's trailing leg takes Lewis Neal's planted ankle out from underneath him. From then on, it's an exhibition in brinksmanship between Rivero and Arnaud. First, the DC midfielder holds nothing back, protesting the PK call that eventually decided the game. Then, just before halftime and right after drawing a handball call, Arno cynically takes down Orlando midfielder Christian Iguita. He does it again in the 90th minute before saving the best for last. Here's where I think all that flirtation could have, and probably should have, resulted in a sending off. With Orlando trying to kill the game in extra time, frustration gets the better of Arno, and he throws himself into Breck Shea's legs. Rivero calls the foul once again, prompting our nose ire, but he doesn't produce the yellow and subsequent red card I think was deserved. Tell us what you think in the comments below, and thanks again to all of you who helped us spot plays using the instant replay hashtag on Twitter. For Editor Abner Sevis, I'm Andrew. See you next time!